By the end of the 19th century, support had grown for the education of women in professional fields, especially in commerce and teaching. In this conquest, women as educators and teachers assumed a major role in the struggle for equality in education and the modernization of teaching. The city of Madrid formed the nerve center of all these historical events. One of the first institutions that contributed to this advance was the Association for the Education of Women, founded in Madrid by Fernando de Castro in 1870. Together with its School for Governesses, it offered the best and most varied education for young middle-class women. Both furnished basic models for the reorganization of the Training College for Women Teachers in 1882. However, the Free Educational Institution, founded in Madrid by Francisco Giner de los Rios in 1876, and the first co-educational college in Spain, also provided a major impetus for the education of women. Many women, including Concepción Arenal, Emilia Pardo Bazán, Carmen de Burgos, and María Goyri, among numerous others, had close ideological ties with the institution, whether as students or teachers, and participated in the public, political, and intellectual sphere of the time in defense of a secular and liberal education. The social and educational advancement of women was promoted and consolidated during the Second Spanish Republic, greatly assisted by legal equality, and women teachers became the perfect representatives of this new female identity. Teacher training achieved university status, and women teachers played a crucial role in the history of Spain, defending the ambitious project of educational reform and fighting for equality between men and women and for a mixed-sex, public and democratic education. The role of both male and female teachers was dignified to the point where they were considered the soul of the school. A new educational plan was created in which men and women studied together and where, for the first time in Spanish history, the teacher training school staff was also mixed. In this context, Republican women teachers became a model of citizenship for their female students and for the whole of society, and their position wrought a change in gender relations. After 1931, they also participated in the cultural and literacy outreach work promoted throughout Spain by the Republican government through the educational missions. The education they received in training college was based on the modern educational and cultural principles of liberal Europeanist schools of thought, and this rendered them experts and disseminators of the most innovative educational approaches, including the values of secularism and tolerance. However, the Spanish Civil War and the victory of the Franco regime truncated all the opportunities that many women and female teachers had enjoyed during the Republic. They were subject to harsh purges and reprisals, not only due to their status as teachers, but also because of their condition as women, questioning their human dignity. Many went into exile in Mexico, subsequently contributing to education in that country. Under the Franco regime, Preschool and primary education remained in the hands of women, but was now governed by the strict national Catholic regime and segregationist ideologies of the women's section, which relegated women to the status of minors. The profession of teacher was nevertheless one of the few that the Franco regime allowed women to practice, while banishing them from the other professions that they had begun to exercise with success. Teachers such as Covadonga Perez, Julia Vigre, Maria Sánchez Arbos, Maria Salvo, Lola Velasco, and Concepción Sainz evidenced the professionalism of women in education in difficult times. It was only after the advent of democracy in 1975 that the values of equality in education were restored. <laughs>